today finds me on a south facing hillside here at the Fort Ancient State Memorial in mid August here. And I'm out looking for hickory leaves. I've done a lot with the winter identification of five different hickory trees and also some summer identification, but I'm gonna do um, all five sets of compound leaves in this one video clip here to kind of put the wraps on these trees and make sure we know exactly what we're looking at winter and summer. We've got a real large uh, pignut hickory tree here in the background, big pignut hickory tree in the background here, probably a foot and a half in diameter and it reaches all the way to the sky. So let's work on pignut hickory leaves. I did the bark and nuts a few months ago when it was still winter. And this tree has um, dropped all kinds of nuts on the ground here and some of them have become new pignut trees. Just a reminder, the nuts on the pignut hickory have a very thin shell. I'm taking one out right here. And I got that dollar bill there for scale for other reasons. It's a real thin shell. It's about an inch to two inches long. They're often teardrop shaped. And they litter the ground by the thousands here. Let's use that dollar bill to scale off one of these pignut hickory leaves. Normally pignut hickory and shag bark hickories have five leaflets on a compound leaf. Here's one right here. And that pignut hickory leaf with its five leaflets is about the size of this dollar bill. And the insects have been eating some of these leaflets, so they got some holes and one of them is almost completely gone. And here's another one right here with that dollar bill for scale. So on average, the pig nut hickory leaves are smaller than the shag bark hickory leaves. Um, they are often the size of a dollar bill. And the shag bark hickory leaves are often much larger. Now on a pignut hickory tree, we can get some leaves that are larger. So it's not a set, uh, an, a, we're, we're, right now I'm working on a set of averages. So there's my dollar bill for scale. Got another one right up here. It's got some larger leaves. Every tree is a little bit different depending on how much sun it's getting and how much nourishment it's getting. Here's one right here. It's probably the size of one and a half dollar bills. And there's our look right there at the top of the leaf. So they, they're very similar in color. The bark on the shag bark tends to be a little smoother when it's young like this. This is only six inches around. And the pig nut often already has that furrowed appearance and that olive gray color. So both shag bark and pignut have five leaflets on average. They can't have seven, but that's what they normally have. And we'll find a shag bark soon and compare the size of those leaves to the ones we've just recorded. And I'll continue with my study of the foliage of the five native hickories to the lower Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Appalachian regions. I've got a shag bark hickory here. It's about an inch in diameter. It's a, still a sapling. And as saplings often do, they have really large leaves to kind of get themselves going, get some extra large solar panels on this tree. But I'm comparing this to the pig nut, which had uh, leaves that were about the size of a dollar bill, including the stem and all the five leaflets. And what I have here is a pretty large shag bark leaf with five leaflets and these leaflets by themselves are as large as this dollar bill. So if you measure this leaf, including the stem, it's at least two and a half dollar bills, almost three dollar bills long. So much larger than the pig nut. If there's any doubt about which tree you're looking at with five leaflets on a hickory tree, on average, the, the shag bark hickory leaves are much larger. They also have a much thicker stem here, and it tends to be a little hairier than the uh, pig nut. So that's one way to tell them apart. We've got some more right back here in the shade that are similar size. We've got $1 bill, $2 bills, almost $3 bills long on this set of five leaflets and stem right here. 
Up top on this tree, there's some smaller sets of compound leaves that might almost be the same size as those of the pig nut. But on average, they're much larger and um, also have a thicker stem and it's usually a little bit hairier than that of the pig nut. And let's continue our study of the compound leaves found on hickory trees. This is going to be a five-part study, starting with the smallest leaves. The smallest compound leaf, I did the pig nut, followed by the shag bark, which also has five leaflets. And now we're getting up to the ones that can have up to 11 leaflets. That's the bitter nut hickory, between 7 and 11. Most of these have either 7 or 9 on these, these particular trees here, which aren't that old. They're just a couple inches in diameter. One way we can tell it's a bitter nut hickory is those orangish brown buds getting ready to pop next spring. I did a series on that last winter and a series last summer just on the bark and fruits only on a tree that was too large to see the foliage. But let's look at this foliage. It's a compound leaf just like the um, pig nut and shag bark, but in this case this has two, four, six, eight, nine leaflets. As far as size goes, it varies a lot, but most of these are at least two dollar bills long. I've got my dollar bill on the stem there, and it comes up to the first set of leaves or leaflets, and then there's room for another dollar bill right next to that. So definitely larger than the pig nut, comparable in size to the shag bark. And I'm gonna make a generalization and say that this particular hickory has the largest teeth along the edge. Those teeth are probably an eighth to a quarter inch in size. And the other hickories have teeth, but they're closer together and not as large on average. So this is our bitter nut hickory. And these are just saplings here. And this is in Pulaski County, Indiana. I'm at the Tippy Canoe River State Park doing some hiking and camping. And this is one tree that I found today. And let's continue our study of the compound leaves on the five native hickories that are common to the Ohio Valley, Lower Great Lakes, and Appalachian regions. And here's a hickory that you can find in the Appalachian Mountains. I don't find a lot of it in the Ohio Valley. I find it occasionally. It tends to do well and is often common on the drier soils of ridge tops in the mountains. And here we are on Sand Ridge Trail, and this isn't a flatter part of Indiana, but it's very sandy here, as you can see. And it creates a great habitat for a plant that is drought resistant, which is our mocker nut hickory. I got my dollar bill on there for scale. This leaf here is about average size for a sun loving tree. This is in the sun here, so for a leaf that's getting a lot of sun, it's got nine leaflets and it's about two dollar bills long. Some of the shorter ones are less than that, but I would say that it's between one and a half and two dollar bills long on average. These leaflets are um, quite hairy on the stem. And the back of the leaf has got an orangish hair on it as well. And as you remember from my winter identification of the mocker nut hickory, it has very large leaf buds. Quarter to a half inch in size for next year's growth, already ready to uh, wait, waiting for next year's growing season, all set up for that. And the bark is still fairly smooth on this smaller tree, but it does get that um, interlacing ridges that I've shown on my uh, winter identification videos of the mocker nut hickory. So we got four down. Let's get the shell bark under the in, uh, in the books, and we'll have a complete set of hickory leaf identification in the summertime. So we got again seven to nine leaflets on this. Mocker nut hickory. Most of these have nine. There's a few that only have seven. And let's add number five to our list of common hickory trees found in the Appalachians, Lower Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. And this is the one that's probably more likely to be found in the moister soils of the Ohio Valley and Lower Great Lakes and less common in the Appalachians especially in the higher elevations. So here's our uh, shell bark hickory. It's called king nut hickory because the nuts are real large, two to three inches sometimes in size with the shell. 
And the leaves are quite large too, larger on average than the other four hickories I've put on this channel. And we're looking up at a, um, a tree that's still getting going, but there's a whole grove of them here, different sizes. And there are start, some of these are actually starting to get that shaggy bark that is similar to a shag bark hickory, but these have more leaflets than a shag bark. They usually have seven. They can have nine, and they, it's possible for them to have five leaflets. But seven is what I'm normally finding on most of these trees. And on this particular hike here, this is along the Flat Fork Gorge at Caesars Creek State Park in Warren County, Ohio. We've got some small waterfalls back here that aren't running right now, but this is a very scenic trail. And moist soil and a good habitat for this shell bark hickory. We've got a dollar bill down here for scale on our shell bark leaf. This one has seven leaflets. And it's at least three and a half dollar bills long. And just for comparison, here's an average sized mocker nut leaf, which is about two dollars bills long. So the mocker nut is definitely smaller in size on average. Now these shell bark leaves are not always this large, but they often are, especially on the ones that you find closer to the ground that are on saplings. So often the leaves that we can use to identify these trees are the larger leaves that are on saplings or lower branches that are growing more aggressively. So yes, the shell bark is um, a little bit lighter on the back than on the front. It's a little bit smooth in places and hairy in places. So it has a, a similar feel to the mocker nut, maybe not quite as hairy, but definitely the size. And the shape of these leaflets tend to be wider at the end than at the base. And on average, the mocker nut tend to be wider at the base or wider at the middle and not at the point. So that's another way we can tell them apart. But often the mocker nuts are found in dry soils. And these shell barks are found in moist soil. So they often don't grow side by side. But this is the fifth of our native hickories and this is our summer appearance.